What's going on, everybody? Again, Keith Gebhardt here with LearnTechTraining.com. First and foremost, please do not forget to hit that subscribe button below. And today in this lab, we're going to learn how to mimic an ISP within Cisco Packet Tracer, but we're also going to introduce on how to connect a Cisco router to a DSL modem. So for all of those people that were asking me, how can I take a physical CCNA lab, you know, with all the physical equipment, routers, and switches, and how can I connect it to my home network to communicate out to my ISP? This video is for you. Now, even though this isn't within Packet Tracer and it might be a, just a tad bit different in your situation, it's all the same principles. So if you follow along in this, you will still be able to connect your physical Cisco router to your home DSL modem, and then that'll be able to reach out to your network. So this might be a lengthy lecture because we're going to go through this step by step. We're going to introduce some technologies, for example, web servers, DNS servers. We're going to introduce some DHCP. We're going to also introduce some access control lists, which we can utilize some NAT or PAT, which is port address translation, which is necessary for us to be able to reach our ISPs. One thing I do want to point out, though, is how weird this ISP in the blue here looks. This isn't really how you would typically represent an ISP. In fact, the ISP, when you're connecting to your internet, usually you just have a representation of a cloud. But Cisco Packet Tracer's cloud is quite dumb, if you will. But we need it to have a phone line to connect to our DSL modem. Typically, when we represent um, ISPs, it's just a whole bunch of different routers that make up that cloud. Right, so if I'm all the way over here on the left and I'm trying to communicate, you know, maybe the left side's California, over here on the right's New York City, you know, it's going through all these different service providers sharing leased lines and, you know, just forwarding the packet through to make that communication possible. There's never one single point in time where if you're connected to a Verizon ISP that by the time it connects to a server or another device all the way out in California, that it's still going through Verizon. It's, it's somewhere in the middle going through the entire United States or even if you're in any other country, Canada or somewhere in the UK, where, wherever you reside that you're watching this, it's going through multiple service providers. So just remember that when we talk about the cloud, it's not just something that looks like this. All right, I just wanted to bring that to your attention now. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and open up a blank Cisco Packet Tracer Lab and get started. All right, so the first thing we want to do is actually grab a couple end user servers. So we'll just grab one there. We could grab, drag one here. And I'm just going to name this server here. We could name him uh, DNS, right? And then the server down here we'll name uh, Google, google.com, because that's going to be our web server that we're reaching. We need to have a router in here, so I'm just going to pull in a, a, let's do a 2811, all right? Now, right here, we could open up this router. We're going to open this up, and I'm just going to zoom in. So you're going to see there's a power button here. We need to turn this off. We need to go down here and grab an ESW161, which is in 16-port switch module for our router. Go ahead and turn the router back on. We're also going to go down here to the cloud. We're just going to click generic, this guy right here. And we're also going to connect a DSL modem. We could drag and drop them here. We go back to routers. We could grab a 2811 or, you know, let's use an 1841. We'll drag and put him there. And then we need a 2960 switch right here. And we're also going to use two end user devices. So we'll drag and drop this guy there and drag and drop this guy here. So this guy's name is going to be HR. This guy's name is going to be staff. So as you can see, we're creating an inner VLAN routed network while we're doing all this. So it just takes it a step further. Now, I want to just document some things here, what the IP addresses will be 8.8.8.1, class C mask. This guy down here is going to be 10.10.10.1, .10 .10 again, class C mask. And then our network up here will be, uh, what do we do? We're going to do, as you can see on the left-hand side here, I do have all the base configurations so you guys can follow along easier. And he's going to be 20.110.24.1, just to make it, actually, technically, he'll be .0 24. This will just help make it more realistic with a public IP address. All right. Now, router 3 here is going to be our um, service provider, um, ISP router. This way, you could just help distinguish them a little bit. And this router here will be your Soho small office home office router. That way, if you're saving this lab, you can go back and reference it without any issue. So now let's go ahead and start cabling these devices. So we're going to take a couple straight through cables from the server. Fast Ethernet 0, we could go right into Fast Ethernet 1.0 on the router. 
and then we're going to also go from Google. We're going to go to Fast Ethernet 1.7. All right, you need to pay attention to these because we're moving these ports into different VLANs. Go to the server for DNS. We're going to go to desktop. We're going to IP address them while we're here. 8.8.8.8. Class E 255.255.255.0. The gateway will be 8.8.8.1. DNS will be 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. All right. So I actually made a mistake documenting these. These will be the gateways we are using. All right. And then we need to go to services while we're still in the DNS server. We need to go down to DNS, turn it on. We're going to say www.google.com. Address will be 10.10.10.10 for his server. Click add and bada bing, bada boom. So go to desktop, um, IP configuration is already done, good. Let's go to Google, let's go to desktop, IP address him. He's going to be 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. his, his, his subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0. Gateway will be 10.10.10.1. And DNS server again will be 8888. All right, we can go to services, go to HTTP, make sure that is on and everything looks good. Go ahead and close him out. Now we need to configure the router um, switch module to recognize these two different networks over here and I did it this way so you could see it both done inside of a router and then down here we'll do it within the switch where we introduce interview and routing so click the CLI at this menu here we're just gonna say no and we need to start configuring a few things I'm just gonna um, oh, we need to go enable config T we're gonna say host name is ISP router and then line con zero and no logging sync. Oh, we just say logging sync, logging sync. This just helps keep our cursor in place if syslog messages come in, which they will be. Here we need to say interface um, VLAN 8 for our DNS server. We're going to IP address him as 8.8.8.1 for our default gateway, 255.255.255.0. And we could go ahead and hit enter, exit him. Interface VLAN 10, and his IP address will be. 10. Dot, oops, sorry, 10.10. Ten uh, keep messing up. 10.1 space 255.255.255.0. Hit enter and exit that. Now we need to move those actual switch ports over into the switch modules. To do that, we just simply say interface range F1 through or 10 through 6. Okay, we're going to say switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 8. Enter. We're also going to say spanning tree port fast okay because we're not connecting any other switches to those and then we need to say no shut down boom exit that we could go into interface range f1 slash 7 through 15 and we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to say switch port mode access switch port access vlan this time it's going to be 10 we're going to do uh, spanning tree port fast and we're also going to say no shut down we could exit this do WR to quickly save it, and everything is good for this left side. But now we need to start configuring our um, our outside interface for this for our public network, right? So for this, we're just going to go ahead and say interface F00, F00, and his IP address will be 20.110.24.1 with a class E mask, 25, 255.255.255.0, hit enter. And we're going to say no CDP enable, which basically does not allow it to broadcast any other neighbors within this network out to the cloud or other ISPs, for example. And then we simply say no shutdown. All right. Now we can exit this and we should be good. Now we let's just connect or cable some of these other devices up before we start doing um, actual um, DHCP configurations. Before we do that, though, let's go into the cloud. You can see it is an empty box right here. Turn that off. We're going to grab a 1AM and drag him in. We're also going to drag a 1CFE into that as well. We could turn him back on. Now we could go ahead and close out this guy. We're going to grab an Ethernet cable. We're going to go from 00 on the router to Fast Ethernet 9 on the cloud. We're going to grab a phone cable, go from modem 4 to port 0 on our DSM modem. Go back into the cloud, go into the config option, DSL, we're going to map modem 4 to Fast Ethernet 09, click add, and we're also going to go down to uh, Fast Ethernet 9, make sure it's set for DSL. Beautiful. Go back into our ISP router, and we need to configure some DHCP. So what we're going to do is say um, IP DHCP pool, and we're just going to name this customers, right? And then we could say our D 
default router will be the gateway, which was 20.110.24.0. No, I'm sorry, 24.1 is our gateway for that interface. We're going to advertise its network using DHCP, so it's going to be 20.110.24.0 with a Class C mask, so it knows the network range to advertise these addresses out on. We're also going to set up the DNS server in DHCP so it broadcasts that as well, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 and we can exit this. We need to do one more thing. We need to do an IP DHCP excluded addresses, which will be the gateway for that interface, which is 110.24.1. Boom. We could go ahead and end this. We're going to do, or we could just say copy RS for running startup config, right? And everything there should be good for our ISP router. Let me just scroll down here in the configuration so you can see where we're going next. All right, now what we want to do is connect our DSL modem to our router, and then we'll just continue cabling everything up. Let's cable this guy from port 1 down to the router to FA00. And then we're also going to configure F01 to our switch to port 1. That's important. And then we're going to configure our PC, our HRPC nonetheless, to port 5 on the switch and then we're going to configure our staff PC here to port 10 on the switch beautiful let's go into this router here all right we're gonna let me just move him over here and drag him down here so everything here is good we don't need any other additional modules for this because we're going to be introducing let me just shrink this we're going to be doing inner vlan routing on this side so over here we're doing inner vlan or we're routing different networks based off of the switch port module this router knows of in fact if i do a show ip route you're going to notice it automatically knows of all those networks because it's directly connected and we didn't have to really configure anything but the vlans here we have to actually go a step further create sub interfaces we got to create a trunk link and then we got to move these two interfaces into the VLAN on the switch. So just a couple extra little steps, nothing too extravagant though. It's just another way to do it. So here I'm just going to say no and enable config T. We're going to do a host name um, Soho underscore router and we're going to do line con zero logging uh, synchronous. And again, this is just more or less an easier way for you to configure continue your configurations without being interrupted with syslog messages. So here we need to go ahead and um, configure our F00 interface to pull a DHCP IP address from the ISP. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we're just going to go interface F00, right? And we need to say um, IP, DH, or IP address DHCP, and we're going to say no shutdown. Now if I exit this, after a few minutes, this will obtain a DHCP address from this router, and we may even see a syslog message from it. Now, to take this further, we need to create sub-interfaces on F01. So right here, you can see we're plugged physically into an interface, but we need to break that up into multiple sub-interfaces. So to do that, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go and say interface F01.5 encapsulation dot one q and vlan id of five we're going to go ahead and ip address him one seven two sixteen five dot one two five five two five five two five five dot zero and we could exit this guy and then we could go interface f zero one dot ten his encapsulation protocols dot one q as well vlan id is ten ip address will be one seven two sixteen ten dot one class c mask and he is good for there now that is only at what the sub interface ad sub interface level so we actually have to go into the physical interface which is interface f01 and say no shut down and you can see all that comes up if i do show ip interface brief you'll see we obtain our dhcp address from our isp now this is very similar to what your public ip address is at your home so before you start unplugging all your networks and everything when you're at your house, go to Google and say, what is my IP? And it'll give you your public IP address. Write that down because you're going to need that for when you start configuring your router to do what we're doing right now. So with that said, we need to actually go down and configure a few other things down here on the switch. And then we'll go back and configure um, our access control list and NAT and PAT. So go back down to your switch. And again, it was important to pay attention to the interfaces I used. If you are following along, I suggested that. Enable config T. Interface F01, right? That's what we used right there. Beautiful. He's going to be um, switch port mode trunk. We could exit this. 
right? And then we need to do um, VLAN 5, name HR, exit VLAN 10, name staff, and we could exit him. Interface, we could just do the single interface for this example. Interface F05, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 5. And then exit this, we're gonna do interface F010, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. Exit this. So everything on the switch right now is configured and should be working accordingly. But we need to go a step further. We need to start configuring our actual router to map our local, our private IP addresses, which is that 172.16.5.0 um, network and 172.16.10.0 network to our public IP address. So let's go ahead and get that going. So we can go down and pull this out. And the first thing we could do is actually configure our access control list. So we're going to say access, uh, sorry, access list one. So this is a standard numbered access list. We're going to just say permit 172.16.5.0 and a wildcard mask of all zeros and 255. Now, if you want to learn more about access control lists, how they work, the various types of access control lists, and Nat and Pat, I have an excellent course that's in the description below. You can take it for $9.99. And it'll walk you through all this information a lot more in detail so you have a full and complete understanding of it. But for now, we're just trying to build this lab so you know how to set up your small office, home office networks. We're going to create another access list, number that two. And again, we're just saying permit. And it's got to be the 172.16.10.0 network, 0.0.0.255. Hit enter. And everything is good for the access control list. Let's go ahead and create our NAT. So we're going to say IP NAT inside source. And we're going to say list one for that access control list. And we're going to go to the interface F00, right? So our IP um, inside source list is mapping it to FA00. Let's go ahead and um, hit enter. IP NAT inside source list uh, two interface F00 yet again. We go into our sub-interfaces, F01.5. He's going to be IP NAT inside. Exit this. We're going to do interface um, F01.10. And he's going to be IP NAT inside as well. And then we could exit that. Interface F00 will be IP NAT outside. Beautiful. Let's exit that. Do WR. And let's go ahead and shrink this. So right now, we should have communication. Let's go ahead and go to desktop. Go to command prompt. And let's try ping this network's default gateway. So it's 172.16.5.1. Hit enter. Now, one or two might drop because it's got to do the ARP resolution protocol, right? It's got to map that IP to its MAC address in the switch. And that's if we configured the interface properly. Let's just double check. Let's just double check real quick. So let's go ahead and do show IP interface brief. Uh, do show IP interface brief. And he is 172.16.5.1, 10.1. Okay, everything's good there. That is F01. Cool. We set up our trunk link. We could go into the switch, say show interface trunk. Okay, VLANs 1, 5, and 10 are allowed. Um, FA is trunking, so that's good. Let's go back to the computer. Let's go to the desktop. Let's close him out. IP configuration. Ah, we never configured the computer. So 172.16. 5.10 is his address, 255.255.255.0. Gateway will be 172.16.5.1, and DNS will be 8.8.8.8. Just to save on time, I'm not going to configure staff. We're just going to work off of the HR computer. If I go back to command line prompt, if I hit that up arrow, we have communication. So now I want to take it a step further. Let's try to ping our um, first address here. So that was 1, or I'm sorry, 20.110.24.2. And we have communication. Beautiful. Now, let's go ahead and try to go further. We know the interface on our service provider. Now, you personally would not know this, but since we're building a lab and we're testing it going forward, this is an easy way to do it. So from here, we could just say ping. All right, so we have 20.110.24.1. And let's see if it resolves. Again, sometimes it takes a minute because of that ARP. And if it doesn't, all right, so it did, there we go. So we're getting our NAT is working at this point. So now we could actually just go ahead and let's go to, uh, let's close this guy out. Let's go to our web browser and let's just type in www.google.com. Hit enter. Again, it's probably going to take a minute to resolve. Now, usually when you go to web servers within Package Tracer, you have to ping it first because it takes so long to, so long to resolve it. 
as I can see it's going to do here. So I'm going to go close this out. Let's go back here. Let's um, go straight into our command prompt. And let's go ahead and ping. Let's say ping 10.10.10.10. Uh, .10 and we got reply back from our internet service provider. And let's also ping our DNS, make sure that's right, 8.8.8.8. And everything is working. So now if we go back to our, in fact, I just want to double check. I know we're going through this pretty fast, DNS, google.com, 10.10.10.10. And let's check our Google servers, desktop, IP configuration, DNS servers right. Is my DNS server over here correct? It is beautiful. So from here, we could go ahead and now go to our desktop and go www.google.com, and it works. So you can see how it gets hung up in Packet Tracer a little bit, but again, just go through your troubleshooting options and you know your troubleshooting processes and it'll be able to work for you. Now, this is just the generic Cisco web page. We could change that to make sure we know indeed it is um, coming from us. I'm just gonna edit my index file and we could just remove this and say uh, Google, right? And welcome to, we could change this and we could say welcome to Google and then don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> See what I did there? We could save this. It's going to ask you to save it. Yes. We could go back to our HR computer web browser. Type that in again, www.google.com. And now you can see we are actually indeed um, reaching the server we set up. All right, guys. So that is how you set up a physical Cisco router to connect to your home and DSL modem. Noticing that we are using access control lists to permit our internal network's IP address, which we gave it 172.16.5.0 and 172.16.10.0 network. And we're basically saying NAT this, so translate it out to our public IP address. Now, we re we obtained our IP address for F01 right here dynamically from the service provider. You would find that information out by simply going to Google saying and typing in what is my IP, and it'll populate in the search browser for you. Write that down, and then when you go into your router, Instead of using IP DHCP, so for example, this interface right here, F00, okay, I'm, I'm before we did interface F00, and I said IP address DHCP, right? That's what we all did together. Instead, you're going to put in that address, so I could say 20.110.24.2. Now, I'm not going to do that now because I already have a DHCP leased IP address for it, but that is what you would want to do for your home network. That's typically what you would do okay now your isp might be giving you a dynamic ip address which i doubt but it might be so if you look at what my ip address is and it does not work then do not enter it manually just simply say dhcp all right and again you don't have to do anything else as long as you have your access control list configured and you're pushing or forwarding your ip nats from inside out to the internal interface which again is f00 all right, guys, so I hope that helped answer a lot of your questions. I hope you guys found this helpful. Please do not forget to smash that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I will see you in the next one.